this week on UBC. What scientists do, they find out which part of the virus or the bacteria is most important you know, for protection, and they design it in the lab and okay. they use it. You mean to say the vaccine kind of provokes this defense system in the body? Exactly. Uh, to fight against the five. Those eligible for HPV vaccines and women of childbearing age is still going on in all our health facilities. Parents and caregivers, take all your children for immunization as per their schedule. All vaccines are safe, effective and free. Remember to observe the COVID-19 prevention measures as you go for immunization services. Wear a mask properly covering your mouth and nose. Wash your hands regularly with soap and clean water or use an alcohol-based sanitizer. Maintain a physical distance of at least two meters from others and avoid crowds. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from partners. Qualified, professional, and compassionate doctors talking real solutions to real health problems. Did you know that since the beginning of the COVID pandemic, over 147 million cases have been registered around the world, and more than 3 million people have lost their lives? This includes uh, over 300 Ugandans losing their lives to the COVID disease, which is quite a terrible disease. But this picture could change with the innovation of the new technology, the COVID vaccine. With me in studio, I am pleased to host a senior expert who has lots of experience in the field of virus research and vaccines. Uh, we are pleased to host Professor Caleb Ponciano who is the director of the Uganda Virus Research Institute, based at Entebbe. That's where all the research into vaccines is currently ongoing. He also serves as the director of the Medical Research Council and the Uganda Virus Research Institute, partnering with the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine Institution, also based at Entebbe. And uh, he's also a senior member of the COVID Vaccines Access Committee and a member of the Scientific Advisory Committee at the Ministry of Health. So he's a very senior person and we're glad to host him on the show today. I must welcome again to the show. Thank you. Thank uh, you very Professor much. Professor Ponciano. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. And I am your host for today, Dr. Dara Sawachi. So to give you uh, a bit of a background of the COVID, how we've reached the extent of the vaccine. The COVID <coughs> pandemic started in December 2019. And since then, we have had close to 150 million cases around the world diagnosed with COVID, COVID disease, and more than 3 million people sadly losing their lives. In Uganda, the story has equally had its impact. More than 40,000 Ugandans have uh, been infected with this virus, and uh, we have lost about 300, uh, 300 Ugandan souls. Uh, our sincere condolences with the people who may have lost their relatives to this disease. So the creation of the COVID vaccine is going to change the landscape of this epidemic. And uh, our professor, Professor Ponciano, is going to tell us all about the COVID vaccine. So, Professor, once again, you're most welcome. Thank you. Yes, Thank uh, you very much. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm sure people will be very curious to know all about the vaccine. There are lots of, there's lots of information around the vaccine. Some of it is true. Some of it is false. People are, you know, skeptical. They're like, do they go through the vaccine? Do they not? It is just, it is just a bit of, uh, can I say, chaos around that area. But uh, given your expertise in the field of vaccines, I'm sure you hope clear the air and give more guidance to the people. So um, we would like to know, maybe to start us off, uh, people would want to know what exactly is a vaccine. They hear about this thing called a vaccine. Mm but they really don't get mm. the logic behind it. So mm. what, what exactly is a vaccine, Professor? So a vaccine mm -hmm. is um, uh, what is given to individuals yeah, mm. 
in order to protect them against disease. Okay. So it's not the same as treatment. Mm. Treatment is given to people who are already infected mm. or are sick, but okay. a vaccine should be given to an individual to prevent getting infected. Okay. I think we are what we are and we are living, our children are, are living uh, because many of us because of the vaccines. We are used to childhood vaccines. Mm. Ch vaccines have been there for a long time okay. uh, and they have prevented mm. uh, many of uh, uh, many deaths, especially for viruses where we don't have treatment. Mm. So really it is given to you to prevent uh, infection, getting uh, infected. Sometimes, okay. yes. yeah, sometimes, and this is not new with COVID, you may get infected, but it will prevent you from getting severe disease and death. Okay. So I think that's one of the, the, uh, the confusion that comes about. Is this mm. a vaccine? Yeah, it is still a vaccine. Mm -hmm. and even other vaccines we have had before, sometimes you could get some infection, but at least they prevent uh, the progression of disease. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that the disease is not as bad as it, it would hit someone who hasn't been vaccinated. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so you mentioned the vaccine is not a treatment. You know, some people think once you get the vaccine, you can't get the COVID. So how exactly does this vaccine work in the body? What does it do to help someone not get a very bad form of disease? Or can it prevent someone from not getting the disease at all? Okay. how it works in the body. So the God who made us uh, made defense mechanisms within our body mm. and we have the immune system, very, very important. Uh, this immune system is, has kept us alive. It defends us from a, a lot of infections. Wherever we are, there are a number of infections we get uh, exposed mm. to, mm. but the body then produces what we call either antibodies or T cells Mm. So that when you get again exposure, you meet that infection again, the defense is there, the army is there mm. to this protect you. This defense is within you. the body. Within the body, mm. your body. Mm. So normally we see it when you get infected, let's say with measles, mm -hmm. yeah, then if you survive, the body remains with the army, the soldiers, that mm. will be ready in case you get, you get uh, another measles. Uh, measles. So in vaccination, instead of getting natural infection, you are given the vaccine itself that will trigger your body to produce these antibodies and T-cells so that next time when you meet, uh, let's say, that same uh, organism, the body can quickly produce those antibodies and T-cells to prevent, protect against you. Mm. If it's not to protect infection, then it will also help you to reduce, yeah, on when you get infected, it will reduce on the multiplication of the virus, mm. the viral load, so that your disease is mild and you don't get severe disease. Mm. So the, it's the soldiers within their body uh, that will really fight for you when you get uh, exposed to any mm. infection. Very interesting. So you mean to say the vaccine kind of provokes this defense system in the body? Exactly. Uh, to fight against the infection to which it's supposed to yeah. be armed against. Exactly. So does that mean the vaccine, so people will now be wondering, how is this vaccine, does it mean it resembles the virus or is it actually the virus? Do they give you the virus and mm -hmm. you know it stimulates that defense yeah. mechanism? Yeah. So there are many ways of making a vaccine. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we shall talk specifically about the COVID. Mm -hmm. But yes, in some cases, in some diseases, they get the real virus and then they make it weak, very, very weak, mm. yeah, and they can use it as a, a vaccine or they kill it. They use mm. the killed one mm. or they make it weak, what we call attenuated vaccines. Okay. But newer technology has taught us that you can produce parts of that virus or bacteria, not the whole, but parts of it, mm. because what scientists do, they find out which part of the virus or the bacteria is most important yeah, for protection, and they design it in the lab, okay. and they use it. So for COVID, they are using all different approaches. They are using uh, an inactivated, and the, mm. and the vaccines from China use something that is inactivated. Even we, our scientists at Uganda Virus Institute are, are trying to do it. So you can use an inactivated, yeah, or you can engineer them in the lab and you use just a part 
of the mm. virus. And mm. here, mostly they use the spike region, yeah, and either use it, they put it in a vehicle, and you hear later about these uh, adeno, the vectors and all that, put mm. it in a vehicle mm. that uses it to move around. Or now even newer technology of just getting the genetic part of that uh, organism. And now the vaccines, the RNA vaccines are just getting the genetic mechanism. Mm. So there are different approaches. So there are different approaches to making a, a vaccine. vaccine. Okay, but what's most important is, is the vaccine able to um, awaken your defense system, awaken your immune system, so that it is armed and ready in the event that you acquire that infection, it is able to quickly sort out that infection. So don't go, we're still talking about vaccines. Remember, vaccines are one of the most cost-effective methods in preventing disease. You don't wait to get the disease. Go for a vaccine and it will protect you from getting this disease. And uh, in, the, in the context of COVID, it is one of the um, preventative methods that's been advanced to prevent the spread of the COVID-19. So more about the COVID vaccine coming out after the break. If you have any questions, if you've had stories about the COVID vaccine, you want some clarity or some more information, please uh, feel free to reach out on our social media platforms on Facebook, on Twitter. We'll happily respond to them. Don't go away. We'll be right back after the break. You are watching The Dog Talk Show. The Ministry of Health informs the general public that during this COVID-19 pandemic, we should not forget to take our children for immunization. Parents and caregivers are reminded that the immunization services are still accessible at all government health facilities. Please take your child for immunization on time. All vaccines are safe, effective and free. Remember to observe the COVID-19 prevention measures as you go for immunization services. Wear a mask properly, covering your mouth and nose. Wash your hands regularly with soap and clean water or use an alcohol-based sanitizer. Maintain a physical distance of at least 2 meters from others and avoid crowds. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from partners. We've cut and reduced our MTN Momo withdrawal rates. Now you can withdraw mobile money at the lowest rates. You also get MTN Central Points when you deposit, send and withdraw MTN Mobile Money. Visit our Momo agents countrywide and withdraw mobile money at our reduced rates from 1st May 2021. Everywhere you go, MTN. The Ministry of Health informs the general public that amidst the difficult times of the pandemic, routine immunization for all children under 5, those eligible for HPV vaccines, and women of childbearing age is still going on in all our health facilities. Parents and caregivers, take all your children for immunization as per their schedule. All vaccines are safe, effective, and free. Remember to observe the COVID-19 prevention measures as you go for immunization services. Wear a mask properly, covering your mouth and nose. Wash your hands regularly with soap and clean water or use an alcohol-based sanitizer. Maintain a physical distance of at least 2 meters from others and avoid crowds. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from partners. You are watching The Dog Talk Show. Welcome back. Today's discussion is on the COVID vaccine and uh, just some uh, key facts to share with you. Uh, it takes about uh, more than 10 years to develop an effective vaccine. If you look at all the vaccines on the market against hepatitis, against polio and the likes, it has taken a considerable amount of time and research to make these vaccines. However, in the event of COVID, uh, it's quite a special case because uh, we have had a COVID vaccine within one year of, um, you know, from the time the pandemic started and ready to have a vaccine one and a half years later. So the COVID vaccine is quite a very interesting research area. And uh, our professor in studio, Professor Ponciano, is going to tell us more about the vaccine. So, uh, Professor, I think the next question, uh, given the short duration it has taken to make this uh, COVID vaccine, people are genuinely concerned about its effectiveness. How mm. effective is it? If other vaccines have taken a very long mm. time, mm. how can people trust this vaccine which has taken just about a year? Mm. Yeah, I think that's what I was listening to CNN last night mm. and one of those vaccine skeptics 
was talking about how could they make a vaccine in such a, a short time, mm -hmm. how safe. They have not looked a, a long enough mm -hmm. to show the effectiveness and the safety. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the people who are uh, critical about uh, this vaccine. Indeed, this has been the shortest time a vaccine has been made. And there are a number of uh, reasons. First of mm. all, there's been a lot of, it was a global uh, pandemic. Mm. There's been a lot of investment in terms of funding. But also the technology uh, and the, that has been used has not been developed during COVID. It's the technology that has been developed over the years, over the years uh, okay. to fight other diseases, HIV, malaria, and TB. So they have used that technology. And, and also, the, when you look at the scientists that have worked on these and, the, uh, and all that, it's the same that has been used for others. But mm. not all uh, uh, viruses are the same. It's easier uh, to get a vaccine for COVID than HIV. I gave an example. Mm. For many people who get COVID, eh, they recover. The majority of people who get infected with COVID, they recover. Mm. And the reason they recover is because of an immune response. So there's an immune response that is able uh, to uh, at least uh, make you recover and probably even protect you. But for other diseases like HIV, anybody who gets HIV infected, nobody recovers. Mm. The, the, even the body itself is failing, the immune system. So you just see it's complicated to get an HIV vaccine than to get a um, uh, COVID vaccine. Mm. So but all the same, mm. they have gone through the stages in the lab, uh, in the animal studies, they have done phase one studies to look at safety and immune responses, phase two studies, and then they moved into the efficacy studies to find out how effective it is. But studying the vaccine continues, yeah, doesn't end here. It is being rolled out, but studying its effects and how it works continues. Yeah. Continues. So, uh, when, so what, what does the term effectiveness of a vaccine mean? Because uh, people say the COVID vaccine is highly effective. Is it vaccine? This has efficacy higher than the other one. No, it creates confusion and people are now wondering, is this the best? There are even questions of whether the vaccine we have in the country is the best vaccine available. Mm. So how would you help um, address that issue of effectiveness? Yeah. And efficacy? Uh, when you go into the terms of vaccine itself, efficacy and effectiveness are different uh, terminologies. Okay. Uh, but we won't go into the details because I think what people need to know mm. is, is it uh, able to protect you against infection or disease? Mm. So when they do those large studies, they're called mostly phase three studies, when they look at the efficacy of the, of the vaccine, uh, they'll look at individuals who have been vaccinated, yeah, and they compare them with those who have not been vaccinated, they follow them, and then they see uh, how many cases of infection or severe disease are among those who are infect, uh, vaccinated compared to those who are not vaccinated. Mm. And in many of these vaccines that we're talking about, uh, they were able to prevent either severe disease or death at a very high percentage. Okay. We're talking most vaccines, 70%, 80%, 90%. Okay. And some of them even preventing people from getting infected. Mm. So, those, so are those, like, studies, those are like survivors who have got... Yeah. The vaccine, uh, yeah. ninety so, percent survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ninety percent either don't get the disease or don't get severe disease or uh, uh, death. So the comparison has varied among vaccines. There are figures we give to prevent against death and severe disease, and that's the most important. There are also figures we give to prevent against just getting infected so that you don't get infected. Many of these vaccines are working well in preventing severe disease and death. And I think that's what worries us mm. most. Yes, uh, yeah, exactly. because it is the severe disease which is going to take someone to hospital. Someone, yes. The severe disease manifests uh, in such a way that you get a very bad pneumonia, a very inf bad infection of the chest, which uh, compromises your ability to breathe. So you hear people saying, the patient was put on oxygen. So that is really a very bad form of the disease because the disease has spoiled the lungs. So what the vaccines do is they will prevent you from reaching that stage. They prevent severe disease or prevent you from dying or prevent you from getting the COVID uh, in the first place. So mm -hmm. that is what we, when we talk about effectiveness of a vaccine or efficacy of the vaccine, that is basically in a, in a simplified language, that is what they are referring to mm -hmm. when they talk about vaccines. So. Um, 
The current vaccine in the market has very good effectiveness and efficacy profile. That's why the government has rolled it out to the country. And we're encouraging everyone, uh, if you meet the criteria for the vaccine, please go to the hospital and receive this vaccine. It has lots of benefits. Um, it has, uh, it's able to protect you from getting very bad disease, very bad COVID disease, which is likely to take your life. And uh, the, ben the discussions of the benefits far outweigh the risk. So maybe our professor will give us more light in that part. Questions about safety mm. of the vaccines. You mm. know, there are so many theories around COVID vaccine that it causes infertility, it causes blood mm. clots, it causes COVID, it causes COVID disease, it mm. can cause X, Y, Z. I would like you to help clear the air in that area. Yes. How safe is a COVID vaccine? Yeah. And if there are any side effects, which ones are they? Okay, we yes. can say uh, that uh, vaccines are safe. Uh, the main side effects people get are the common ones when you get vaccinated. Mm. Especially pain mm. uh, at the site of uh, injection. Uh, some people get some pain. Others get a little bit, feeling a little bit fatigued, a little bit unwell and say, I don't feel uh, mm. my normal way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so that comes about. Others get a fever uh, and that happens in many uh, vaccinations. Yeah. So, uh, so those are the most more common. Somebody tells you, I had the vaccine, I, didn't, I felt a little bit tired, mm. uh, I didn't feel like uh, as active as, as I normally do, and that is usual. Mm. And then there are many who feel nothing. So these side effects normally come for any vaccine because you have been given something foreign, a protein, mm. and that stimulates your immune system, okay. especially what we call an innate immune system that causes some inflammation, killing okay. some fever and all that. So mm. that is common. Okay. Now, the, the serious ones, uh, the very serious ones, which the, the people who have said, I've had some fever and I felt mm, maybe I need to stay at home, mm. maybe go and see a doctor. And all these are being recorded. There are those who have said, ah, I, I felt, felt like seeing a doctor. And those, um, but we have not had this alarming uh, uh, bad effects of the vaccine. Especially, we shall talk about uh, the, 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 the clot. Do you want to talk mm, about the, the clot now? Or, uh, uh, yes, you can talk about it. Um, mm, yes, you can, you can yeah, yeah, yeah. throw more light maybe, on maybe it. Maybe let's throw, throw more, uh, more light. I think people have worried more about the clot. But mm. the chances of, first of all, the association has been very difficult to get. It's mostly been associated with two vaccines, the AstraZeneca, which is being rolled out, and Johnson vaccine. Uh, and the, the common thing about it is uh, they are using vectors. One is using a vector, using a virus from a, chimp, a, a chimpanzee, a chimp adeno vector to carry the proteins of the vaccine, and another one uses a human adeno uh, viruses. Mm. That is the common about these two. But the, if they're getting the clots, is very rare. They say about four individuals out of a million. So about one in about 250,000. Yeah. Mm. So the real chances are very, very low. And if this is detected early, of course, people will get headache. Uh, people may get blood, vision, abdomen. If you are managed quickly, then we can prevent death. So okay. I can say the risks yeah, of such clots, if you compare them with the benefits, if you have COVID, the chances of dying, the chances of even getting clots are much mm. higher. So that's why we're saying even with, WHO with, the, saying, with the COVID disease. The COVID disease. When itself, you get COVID, COVID the chances disease, of getting clots are much you higher. Can, yeah, you can get clots. The chances are higher okay. uh, than even with the vaccine mm. and death. Uh, so the, va the risks versus the benefits, we're saying it's safer to be vaccinated. Okay. And that's what WHO is saying. Mm. Very, very, <clears throat> very, very important. Um, information there, uh, which our professor just alluded to. Um, your risk of getting blood clots <clears throat> will be much higher if you get the COVID disease because uh, in its, in the disease process tends to cause lots of damage and uh, one of the most feared complications of the COVID disease are blood clots going to your lungs, which can cause um, untimely death. So what professor is telling us is it is safer to get the vaccine because the vaccine in the first place is going to prevent you from getting those very bad forms of the COVID disease, 
therefore preventing you from getting those higher risks of the blood clots, which are much, much higher when someone has COVID compared to when someone does not have COVID. So uh, we hope this will encourage you. If you've had questions about uh, the blood clots associated with vaccines, just remember that the risk is much, much higher. I think, I don't know how many times high, but much, much higher when you have the COVID disease compared to when you do not have the COVID disease. So it's up to you to decide, do you want to get the COVID disease or not? So um, we'll come back to talk more about the safety of these vaccines. There's lots of information surrounding it. I know um, people have so many questions, uh, but we're just going for a short break and we'll be back shortly to explain in detail the why People, some people get blood clots. Why do some people get particular vaccines? Is the vaccine safe for a pregnant mother or a breastfeeding mother? Who can get the vaccine? Who cannot get the vaccine? These are questions that our, our esteemed guest is going to address in the, um, shortly after the break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. You are watching The Dark Talk Show. The Ministry of Health informs the general public that during this COVID-19 pandemic, we should not forget to take our children for immunization. Parents and caregivers are reminded that the immunization services are still accessible at all government health facilities. Please take your child for immunization on time. All vaccines are safe, effective and free. Remember to observe the COVID-19 prevention measures as you go for immunization services. Wear a mask properly, covering your mouth and nose. Wash your hands regularly with soap and clean water or use an alcohol-based sanitizer. Maintain a physical distance of at least 2 meters from others and avoid crowds. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from partners. The Ministry of Health informs the general public that amidst the difficult times of the pandemic, routine immunization for all children under 5, those eligible for HPV vaccines, and women of childbearing age is still going on in all our health facilities. Parents and caregivers, take all your children for immunization as per their schedule. All vaccines are safe, effective, and free. Remember to observe the COVID-19 prevention measures as you go for immunization services. Wear a mask properly, covering your mouth and nose. Wash your hands regularly with soap and clean water or use an alcohol-based sanitizer. Maintain a physical distance of at least 2 meters from others and avoid crowds. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from partners. You are watching The Dark Talk Show. The COVID-19 disease can be prevented through a number of strategies, uh, some of which are very familiar with, things like hand washing, wearing masks, social distancing, reducing the number of crowds in a particular gathering, and uh, lockdown. So these are some of the interventions that have been put in place to prevent the spread of the COVID-19. Uh, in the development, with the development of the vaccine, this would further increase um, the number of people who are protected against the uh, infamous COVID-19 disease. But uh, it has lots of issues around its safety profile. Our professor has just discussed some of the, um, the side effects associated with this vaccine. We just want to bring out the key learning points around the safety of the vaccine and why you should go and receive your vaccine from a nearest hospital. Uh, so, Professor, uh, we just want to revisit the issue of the safety mm -hmm. just to help the audience understand you mentioned that there are some effects which are very minor and there are some which are very serious we want the audience to be able to distinguish if i go for a vaccine today and i get this effect is it minor is it major which one should i 
report, which should be entire report. Mm -hmm. Could you give us some more info in that area? It would be very nice mm -hmm. because you are given telephone numbers to mm -hmm. tell us anything you feel mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we want to record whether it's mild, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, simple things uh, that fit, make you uncomfortable and, uh, uh, and serious ones. So mm -hmm. we want to record everything. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that many people do not uh, report. Mm -hmm. So the information that we have is not complete. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, I have many colleagues who said I, f I didn't feel so well, I had uh, some mild fever, but they didn't report. Mm -hmm. So our encouragement, do report. report. But when you look at the general figures in Uganda and elsewhere, uh, the, these vaccines cause mild. Either you feel nothing, mm. yeah, there are many who feel nothing, yeah, and others feel mild. When I was vaccinated, all I got was some pain at the injection site mm. and a little bit of feeling not as usual, mm. uh, some uh, fatigue, and it passed. Yeah? Mm. Unfortunately, I didn't uh, uh, do the proper reporting, but <laughs> it, we should report. Uh, yes. Now, the serious ones that can even lead to death those are the ones that worry. The good thing, they are very, very, very rare. One of those we are talking about that is being associated with this are the blood clots. Mm. Another one is what we call anaphylactic shock, whereby if somebody has some allergies and the you can get serious reactions mm -hmm. yeah, that can cause very uh, serious uh, effects. Hence, you are asked about any allergies, if you have mm. reacted to any other medicines, those questions come about. Mm. And these are things that happen within a medicine, within a vaccine. It could happen. Mm. So I want to reassure the, the public that the, uh, the vaccines are safe. Yeah? And the, uh, the vaccines, I think the safety uh, is not very different from uh, uh, many other vaccines that mm. we have. Mm. And very important is that if you notice anything that worries you, inform the doctor. Even mm. these serious ones, if the doctors are informed in good time, they can manage you and they can treat you. Okay. Yeah, that's the so, real message. That so we have to get the culture of reporting. Even if you feel, I'm feeling um, tired, I have, have pain, I have a fever, we should still be able to report those side effects to the doctor. So it's yeah. always important. I think on the vaccine card, zero is right numbers. Yes, yes. yes. So, so you should yes. call those numbers on the cards that you're given yeah. and report what you're feeling. You say, I got the vaccine yesterday, yeah. this is how I'm feeling. I feel yeah. dizzy, maybe I'm feeling tired, I feel I'm getting a rush. Yeah. These are signs which the minister is going to track and help, help you and uh, set up a system to help you get help. So if they realize that what you're reporting is a very severe side effect, as Professor has explained, it could be a sign of a blood clot, for example, um, okay, we haven't really talked about the effect, the, side, the signs of the blood clot, but based on your symptom profile, if it matches that of a severe side effect of the vaccine, help will be provided to you immediately. So it's very important that we all get into the culture of reporting. So whenever you're given that card, there's always a number written, a toll-free number. Just call that number whenever you're feeling, even the smallest of side effects, it can do a difference in helping us monitor the effects of the vaccine. Um, so we hope uh, people will get into the culture yeah. of, of reporting, reporting a lot of the yeah. vaccines. Um, so where can someone get vaccinated from yeah. is the next question. I think now we have told them you can report. Yeah. Where can they get vaccinated from and who is eligible for this vaccine? Mm. I think uh, all efforts are being made for many of the main uh, public hospitals to vaccinate, okay. uh, I, I think. Uh, m most of the main uh, uh, hospitals uh, are vaccinating. Uh, we are aware that uh, there has been, uh, there was some delay in uh, uh, selling of these vaccines, but also they have filtered to some of the health centers. Okay. Some health centers also do have mm. uh, vaccination. Uh, okay. So I think we need uh, to ensure we look, uh, work within the districts where we are uh, and the regions where we are, uh, we get information or where vaccination uh, uh, can be found uh, so that people can easily access uh, this uh, vaccination. Mm. Mm. And is it yeah. a free, is it free of it charge? It is free, it is free. It's a free of uh, it charge is free. vaccine. Yes, yeah. uh, it is free. Uh, uh, nobody should charge you mm. uh, for getting okay. vaccinated. And uh, when it comes to which people can okay. receive the vaccine. The vaccine. Is it Which open people? to everyone? Yeah. So initially, of course, who receives the vaccine 
uh, there are many uh, criteria that were taken. Those are at high risk of getting infected, like health workers, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, security forces, yeah, were priority. Yeah. Teachers uh, mm -hmm. who either they are going to interact with children and the one at some stage the schools to start were also considered, but also the age, mm -hmm. yeah, as people get infected. If you look at infection, there are more infections in the middle age group and all that. Mm -hmm. But if you look at people who have get serious disease and die, it really goes on increasing with the age. If you look at the graphs, you will see that for every 10 year increase, the risks of really having severe disease and, and death goes up. Goes so up. that's why you start with the, start with the elderly, 70 above, 60 above, now it's 50 and above because that's where most of the serious disease is. Okay. Uh, so those were the real categories. Mm. Yeah. All okay, right, that's very interesting. So we now know who is eligible, um, basically if you're 50 years and older, or if you meet the criteria of uh, being in those uh, risk groups, the people who are at high risk of getting COVID, based on, I think, by virtue of the occupation, for example, if you're a health worker, you're interacting with different patients, you have to get vaccinated. If you're in the security forces, if you're a teacher, one of the, those, those key groups where the interaction with the population is really, really high. Those are people who should be going to get their vaccine. So we hope uh, each of you will be encouraged. If you haven't yet been vaccinated and you fit this criteria, please go and receive your vaccine at the nearest public hospital and uh, you will be um, protected against the COVID-19. So there is an interesting issue uh, around the COVID uh, vaccine. There are rumors that Uganda is making her own vaccine vis-a-vis uh, -vis imported vaccine. Uh, Professor, since you sit uh, in the institute that is dealing with vaccines and research, could you help clarify in that, in that area? Is it true we are making our own vaccine and when can we expect yeah, it? Yeah. It's not a rumor, it's yeah. the truth uh, that through funding from the government, Ministry of Science and Technology, Preside, uh, Presidential Initiative, uh, some uh, scientists are trying to make a, a vaccine. But making a vaccine takes a long time yeah okay. it's a long time but with the covid with all the information we have things have been shorter and not only uganda there are many countries that are trying to mm -hmm. make a vaccine okay even if we don't get one for covid at least the capacity will be built mm -hmm. the colleagues at makere university are making what they call uh, a subunit vaccine where uh, you make uh, uh, artificial in the lab some proteins that again look like the virus spike uh, and you can use that as a vaccine. Okay. My colleagues at Uganda Virus Institute, some are working on uh, inactivated vaccine. They are already growing the virus, they will inactivate it. Uh, and then there are others who are going to use again uh, a vector, uh, mm. looking for a vector in a chimpanzee to mm. use it. But the stages will be followed again. Mm. In the lab, you go into the animals, and the animal studies are being done at Makerere okay. in the uh, College of Veterinary Medicine. Yeah, where the preclinical animal studies. Then, if everything is safe, and and we are not going to shortcut mm. in the regulatory you go through ethics. the proper proper steps. You have to go through the proper the, uh, steps. Mm. If things are not working out, don't go into the humans. If it shows pro uh, promising, you have to do phase one. You have to do a phase two. So all those are the uh, steps that will be mm. taken. That's that's great, great news to hear. So um, w there's a lot of work which is going into the COVID. Uh, COVID prevention, uh, I know people may be wondering, so what is the government doing? We're actually doing a lot of work. The scientists are working around the clock to develop their own vaccines, to develop new effective ways of preventing vaccine, uh, preventing the COVID disease. And uh, on top of that, we are still managing cases as they come in. So it is up to us, the population, to uh, embrace the interventions that are being advanced to us. The COVID vaccine is available in the country. We, we encourage each one of you, uh, if you meet the criteria, please go to your nearest hospital and receive this vaccine. Let's do our part in preventing the COVID-19 from spreading within the country. So after the break, uh, we're going to discuss a very interesting issue, the issue of the resistant strain and how it works well with the, the resistant COVID virus and if the current COVID vaccine is highly effective against this. Don't go away, we'll be right back after the break. You are watching The Dog Talk Show. 
The Ministry of Health informs the general public that during this COVID-19 pandemic, we should not forget to take our children for immunization. Parents and caregivers are reminded that the immunization services are still accessible at all government health facilities. Please take your child for immunization on time. All vaccines are safe, effective and free. Remember to observe the COVID-19 prevention measures as you go for immunization services. Wear a mask properly covering your mouth and nose. Wash your hands regularly with soap and clean water or use an alcohol-based sanitizer. Maintain a physical distance of at least two meters from others and avoid crowds. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from partners. Patriotism is a feeling of love, devotion, and the willingness to sacrifice for one's country. I say no to corruption because I put my country first. I choose peace over violence because I put my country first. I love Uganda. I serve Uganda. I sacrifice for Uganda. I'm loyal to Uganda. I love my soul. Be patriotic. Uganda first. This message is brought to you by the National Secretariat for Patriotism Co. Uganda, Office of the President. The Ministry of Health informs the general public that amidst the difficult times of the pandemic, routine immunization for all children under five, those eligible for HPV vaccines, and women of childbearing age is still going on in all our health facilities. Parents and caregivers, take all your children for immunization as per their schedule. All vaccines are safe, effective, and free. Remember to observe the COVID-19 prevention measures as you go for immunization services. Wear a mask properly, covering your mouth and nose. Wash your hands regularly with soap and clean water or use an alcohol-based sanitizer. Maintain a physical distance of at least two meters from others and avoid crowds. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from partners. You are watching The Dark Talk Show. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, today's discussion was on the COVID vaccine. And uh, we are going to dive into a very interesting area of, uh, can I say, area of concern as regards the mutated strains of the COVID vaccines, I mean of the COVID virus and uh, the efficacy, concerns about the efficacy of the vaccine against these uh, resistant can we call them resistant or mutated strains of the virus? So, uh, Professor, mm -hmm. is, it, is it we hear in the media, you know, in these international medias, for example, countries somewhere in America or in Asia, they are getting waves of a mutated strain, waves of uh, a resistant virus of the COVID disease. Is this a concern to us, to you, the scientists mm -hmm. who are making, mm -hmm. who are overseeing the production of the vaccine? And uh, could you give some um, assurances or more information on whether the current vaccine in the market would protect against mm. these resistant strains? Okay, mm. and uh, they're calling them the variants. Variants, okay. If we're, the virus always mutates, yeah? Uh, viruses mutate, mm. so it's, it's not strange. Although some mutate and change more than others, like HIV changes so much compared mm. to uh, corona, but mm. the viruses change. They the only way changing. if you want to stop mm. viruses to change and mutate is to stop transmission okay. uh, of the virus. But mm. the moment the virus is being transmitted and moving from one place to another, you get these mutations. Mm. Now, uh, when uh, the pandemic was recognized, the viruses were sequenced very quickly and they identified uh, mm. different, what they call lineages, B, A, and all that, B1, B2. Mm -hmm. uh, and they looked at them. But the first worry was uh, uh, towards the end of last year, uh, now towards the end of yeah, last year, uh, when uh, a, a mutant, actually it was the other year, time moves very fast, mm. the UK mutant was the other year, yes. towards the end of the other year, when the UK variant was recognized, they saw uh, new infections, transmissions increasing, but when they sequenced, they realized there was a particular strain uh, that was being transmitted. Then after that, we got the South African variant. Mm -hmm. Then after that, uh, there was the Brazil mm. uh, variant, which mm. was in, 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 in Brazil and Japan. Mm. And then we got the Nigerian. Then recently, we have got the Indian. Mm. But even here in Uganda, 
We, there's a variant that is called globally as a Uganda variant because Uganda it was first, uh, first recognized here. Okay. It's not as worrying as the others, but we are watching it because more people, as we look at the viruses, are being infected with the, that variant. Mm. But here in Uganda, nearly all the variants we have seen the UK variant, South African variant, Indian variant. Mm. It's already it entered the country. They are already here. Okay. They have already entered. Mm. Fewer in numbers, but some of these variants are increasing, mm. like the South African uh, variant. And hence, work with the ministry and partners, WHO, CDC and others, we are really intensifying our uh, surveillance. Mm. The Uganda Virus Research Institute has been doing a lot of work, uh, the Medical Research Council, the London School, um, sequencing these viruses and providing information. Uh, so we are tracking them. Now, the most worrying, what has been seen is th some of these are more transmissible. And then they, came to, they come to dominate, like the UK one, the South African one, the Indian one, and mm. the Nigerian one, and the Brazilian ones. Mm. They are more transmissible. So that one So, so they easily move a lot yeah, in yeah, the population. Yeah. Because of the way it has changed, it attaches to the cell eh, in the area of the spike region, attaches mm. to the cell more easily. And when you attach there, it becomes easier to transmit. So that one we know. Yeah? Severity of disease, in some of these cases, there is some indication that some of these variants are causing even more uh, severe disease. That has been indicated in the South African variant. Uh, it may cause some severe disease. Mm. And the Indian uh, mm. uh, variant, as we, as we are seeing. The other concern is, of course, the vaccines. And again, mm. for some of these variants, especially I'll talk about the South African variant, uh, and a bit of other variants, you find that some of the vaccines are not as effective uh, uh, when you, you, you look at these variants. For instance, for the current vaccine we're using, the AstraZeneca, uh, when in the lab, initially in the lab, they found that when you get somebody who has been vaccinated, you get their blood, you try to kill the virus in the lab, the, it's less effective against, so the antibodies are less effective against the South African variant. They also showed that, uh, again, the protection against mild and moderate disease is slightly lower, although the sample size was not big enough. Mm. Again, severe disease, we are not very sure. So, but so, at least there's that indication that the vaccine may not as effective. But uh, the recommendation, I know South Africa withdrew the AstraZeneca. The recommendation for now, we have no information that AstraZeneca will not protect you against the severe disease even when you have these variants. But mm. we are continuing to study because that's uh, a big concern. Okay. So I still recommend we go ahead we go with ahead. the vaccine. Yes. Um, because it will still uh, protect against the other strains of the virus. Yeah. I imagine the, the resistant strains are not so many. They're not and so many. Yes. And you mentioned what is key in uh, propagating the virus to mutation is the transmission. Yes. So we still come back to stopping the transmission of the virus. Yeah. If we can continue using our preventive methods like the hand washing, the social distance, using masks, on top of that we're adding the vaccine, that is going to break the transmission of the virus and that is going to prevent the development of uh, these mutated strains. So I think that is, that is where we're basing yeah on yeah. encouraging people to go for the vaccine. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So we encourage our viewers at home who are listening, please do not uh, disregard this vaccine because the benefits uh, uh, definitely outweigh the proposed risks that uh, people are scared of. There are benefits in terms of breaking, what they call breaking the chain of transmission. So the ability of the virus to move from person to person to person. If someone is vaccinated and their immune systems are set up, in the event that they get the corona, the immune system can tackle it down. That means that person will not be able to pass the corona to someone else. Or they already have immunity, so they don't acquire the infection from someone who might have, uh, for example, a resistant strain, and that breaks the transmission. So that's why vaccination is very important. In this regard, in stopping the transmission of the virus, therefore stopping the propagation of some of these resistant strains, and preventing the situation that we see in some of the countries around the world. So, all you know, we're saying vaccines are safe, vaccines still work. Yeah. Everyone should get vaccinated. Yeah. All right. So, um, uh, any final words around the vaccine? Any you know, concluding remarks? 
Um, yeah. Is there, what, what is the future of vaccines? Are we going to see more vaccines? Yeah, coming yeah. up after the COVID, are we going to see, you know, there are different diseases which keep coming up. Mm. Are we going to see so many mm. vaccines developed yeah. in the future? What's the future like? Yeah. I think for future for vaccine mm. is bright, uh, especially with newer technology. There are many uh, scientists who are very excited about this new approach of using uh, messenger RNA yeah, as a vaccine, but okay. also using these vector vaccines like the one of AstraZeneca, Johnson and Johnson. At least now, we have moved to a stage where we are showing that that technology that has been developed over a period of time, for instance, the AstraZeneca made by our colleagues in Oxford, we have been working with them for a long time. They are colleagues that we know. They have been working on this concept of this vaccine for many, many years. And we have I've been try working with them, for instance, I've been working with them for many years and even we're going to try a vaccine using again that uh, chimp adeno in the Rift Valley uh, fever vaccine trial. Mm. The Johnson & Johnson uh, using the adeno, we have been working with them on Ebola, yeah, mm. and we are doing, a, we have done vaccine trials in Masaka, now in Barara, uh, using the uh, Johnson & Johnson adeno vector. So these platforms have been used for a long time. But now they are shown to work. That is very good. In fact, for us at Uganda Virus Research Institute, we have put up a project and program to develop uh, RNA vaccines for Rift Valley and for others. So mm. the field, I think, is quite exciting. Mm. The other exciting information that in the countries where vaccination, the countries that have had the highest vaccinations include uh, countries like Israel, mm. uh, countries like UK, <laughs> mm. and the uh, United Kingdom is also, uh, sorry, USA is just ca catching up. But in those countries, death is coming down among okay. vaccinated, especially mm. in the elderly and the sick. Mm. Death has completely come down. Death from show, COVID, from the from COVID, COVID disease. From COVID. Mm. Uh, so showing that the vaccine is already showing if it, it's working. So I think I encourage, yeah, mm. uh, I encourage <coughs> our uh, uh, Ugandans to uh, really go for vaccination. Uh, we are lucky for the initial vaccines came through what we call COVAX and that has been uh, different funders and the organizations coming together to mm. bring vaccines to us. The government is also planning to, vac uh, to bring vaccines, use the opportunity. Yeah? Uh, the uh, vaccines are safe. These serious uh, effects are very, very rare. Uh, so the benefits for the country and to your family and to yourself mm. very much outweigh. <coughs> Uh, the risks. So let's go for vaccination. Oh, thank you. So I want to thank very much our, our vaccines expert, Professor Kalebu Ponciano, the director of the Uganda Virus Research Institute, for clearing the air on the COVID vaccine. So we hope you, the audience at home, you who is watching the TV right now, will be encouraged to go for the COVID vaccine. Remember the COVID vaccine, vaccines are the what we call the most cost effective. So it means if you had to look at the costs treating a disease versus the costs preventing the disease, vaccines carry the higher benefit. In other words, once you get the vaccine, you're less likely to get the disease and therefore you're less likely to spend a lot of money treating the disease, getting to hospital, and you're more likely to survive. That's what they talk, that's what they mean when they say it's highly cost effective. So we're encouraging each one of you Please go for your COVID vaccine at your nearest uh, public uh, uh, hospital. Remember the vaccines are free of charge, so you won't be expected to pay for anything. And don't forget to report any side effects that you feel on the cards that you receive. You, there is a number written there. So please call those numbers and report the side effects that you're feeling. Some will be minor. Remember, majority of the effects will be very minor one of two or three individuals might get very severe effects of the vaccine but we can only know if you report to the authorities so make sure you report those side effects no matter how small it will make a great contribution to science and for us to understand how important this vaccine is in controlling the epidemic so we well, thank you for watching and hope to see you next time i am the host for today dr Darius Sawachi. if you have any questions or comments regarding vaccines anything that you need clarity on please submit to our social media platforms. We'll be so happy to respond to you. Till next time, goodbye. The Dog Talk Show.
The Ministry of Health informs the general public that during this COVID-19 pandemic, we should not forget to take our children for immunization. Parents and caregivers are reminded that the immunization services are still accessible at all government health facilities. Please take your child for immunization on time. All vaccines are safe, effective and free. Remember to observe the COVID-19 prevention measures as you go for immunization services. Wear a mask properly, covering your mouth and nose. Wash your hands regularly with soap and clean water or use an alcohol-based sanitizer. Maintain a physical distance of at least 2 meters from others and avoid crowds. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from partners.